Mark, oh, this seems to be a story that just continues to run and run, and many people watching will feel sort of an impotence of this country. We can patrol beaches, we can look out for boats, but ultimately the boats still arrive on our beaches and there are still all of these international obligations to then process the people on them. Uh, does, do, do, do patrols on these beaches actually make any difference at all? Well, they make a difference in the sense that any boat that manages to get through the Border Force patrol boats and the Royal Navy out there in the Channel and then land on beaches, uh, the chances of them running off uh, into uh, the local community and then meeting up with their contacts, wherever that might be, are lessened a bit, so that must be welcome because we know there were several worrying incidents last year where boats landed on beaches, uh, some of those on board made their way into the homes of individuals demanding uh, a lift to locations or a use of a mobile phone and the like. So clearly it, it is, it seems, part of what Rishi Sunak was saying about a tougher and more efficient approach to the way in which they control the boats coming across. But yes, there is a fundamental issue. You can be more efficient at detecting the boats and stopping the people, uh, but then of course they're brought into the asylum system and we still have the significant problem of dealing last year with almost 46,000 people. It's what you do really on the other side of the channel to break up <coughs> these criminal gangs. Now, Labour, inst uh, interestingly, have put out new analysis this morning, Tom, in which they've calculated that the criminal gangs made £183 million from the trade in cross-channel migrants last year, because it's about between three and £5,000 uh, to get onto one of these boats, uh, so an average of £4,000, uh, and that, they calculate, was £183 million to the criminal gangs, which, of course, mm. makes it highly lucrative for them. So trying to tackle that, trying to dismantle them, is difficult because there will always be people willing to step in and take their place. And yet the Labour Party isn't offering much difference when it comes to policy. They're saying they'd, they'd fund these processes here in the United Kingdom to a greater degree. They'd try and crack down on gangs overseas. They're not pretty descript about how they would do that. Is there any big difference between how these uh, problems have been dealt with hitherto and what the Labour Party policy is today? Well, one thing that Labour say they want to concentrate on is actually disrupting the people trafficking, uh, trafficking model on the continent. So to that end, uh, they would boost the National Crime Agency task force dealing with these people smugglers, an additional 100 officers, they say, which they believe could make a significant mm -hmm. difference, whether it would or not. I think you probably mm -hmm. need more than that. But they would be working in France, uh, Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, all of these places mm -hmm. where, of course, these people smugglers are operating. Mm -hmm. They have had some successes, to be fair to them, but it's such a huge problem. In mm -hmm. a, £183 million pounds a year, you can see that for every criminal gang or member of a criminal gang you take down, plenty of others will be willing to step into the breach and do that job. Like a very vicious, venomous hydra, the heads keep springing up. Uh, Mark White, thank you so much for your latest analysis there, that exclusive story on those patrols as well for us this morning.